Yes. Okay. <coughs> So today, does anyone know what we're talking about? Photo resistors. And more generally? Sensors. Sensors, <laughs> right? So you have this thing, you can tell it to do stuff, but this is kind of like writing a Python or any really program that has no inputs. It's very boring because all you can do is tell it to maybe blink or blink or blink, but not very brightly. And these things are less exciting than telling it to like turn on when you turn off the lights, or uh, you know turn right when it bumps into a wall, uh, or anything like that. And you can imagine you guys will be getting one of these in two weeks. Um, you're gonna have this little chassis, right? And it's like gonna be really boring if you have your your thing strapped to your chassis and all it does is blink an LED. That's going to be quite boring. So we'll try to avoid that, and we'll try to get some inputs through some sensors. Um, we actually have already used an input in the form of our button, right? We push the button, something happens. Buttons are a common sensor, kind of a binary thing. Um, you can have things in set modes, like a, like a toggle switch, right? You can have it be like on super bright, on medium bright, and then off. You could have it be a momentary button, so like. Um, you press it and it like sends a command like a keyboard. Um, you can have it like a power switch where you press it down and it stays on and then it stays on until you press it again and it turns off. Um, all sorts of even like inside of switches there's all sorts of complexity and different things you can do with them, different kinds of switches. Um, but today we'll sort of get some interesting fun hands-on experience with uh, two kinds of, of sensors in sort of like the very, the most basic classes of sensors, and we'll talk a little bit about digital sensors, which are very cool, they're very cheap now, they're a very good option if you ever decide to do a project. Um, probably start with them. Who did ModCon? Who had to calibrate a thermistor? Who would have paid three dollars for something that would not tell you exactly what temperature it is all the time and calibrate itself? So a lot of people, some people understand the deep educational value of calibrating your own thermistors. But <laughs> aside from that, I mean, it was probably kind of annoying to do this. And if you imagine you had 10 thermistors and you had 10 different lengths of wire, you would have never, ever finished. Because you would have had to you know, count for like the length of wire and the resistance doesn't like bend and get broken. It's a huge pain. So, someone was pretty bright a while ago. I'll show you guys an example of this, maybe during the build time. Um, but they started to think, well, we have these tiny computers. They're really useful. What if we made a really cheap one that we could stick into a little box, and um, it'll, it'll do something like get the temperature, and it'll calibrate itself. And then it'll talk to other devices on the bus, or like a mastery device that queries it, and tell it how hot it is. And this was a really good idea. And there was the birth of the digital sensor, more or less. Um, this thing calibrates itself. Has like maybe, I think probably 10 bits. So two times, uh, two to the 10, um, sort of like divisions. And it goes from some, you know, like negative 40 to like 200 C or something. $3. Calibrates itself. External components that you need are a power supply to ground, which you should already have, and one resistor. Also, you can put a whole chain of these together. And so you can, maybe if you're on Baja or on Revo, or if you have a project where you want to measure a bunch of different temperatures all at the same time, maybe temperatures in different rooms, you build your thermostat, or pretty much anything you want to measure a bunch of different temperatures, you can chain these together. So you can have them like all basically on the same input pin on your microcontroller. And your controller will just say, ah, device three, what is the temperature? The device will say, it's 97 degrees here. Device two, what is the temperature? It's 50 degrees here. Device four, what's the temperature here? This one's outside. It's negative 10. 
Don't go outside. <laughs> um, right? And they're like three bucks, so that's like really cheap, especially since you don't have to calibrate them. Um, expensive thermistors can be like a dollar, so there's not really any point in not going digital for convenience to say. Um, I guess the downside is you can't add easily add <coughs> filters to it, but I don't know if that's something you want to do. It depends on your project. So I'll show you guys uh, more about that later. But who used a photo? Who's used a photoresistor before? Some people, maybe not in ModCon. Yeah, that's good. It's this week's labs. Oh, it's this week's lab. Okay. Oh. Well, I'm going to preempt them then <laughs> and just go ahead and tell you about these things. So these are in a large <laughs> class of, of what I would say is a class of sensor that is a resistive sensor, right? So you guys, who did the strain gauge lab? Lots of you. Okay, so you had this little like thing with all these like sort of fingery interlocking elements, right? And you bent it and they sort of like the resistance changed, right? Because they got thinner and more thick. Um, you guys also have the thermistor, also a resistive sensor. Um, and also you have our LDRs, which are light dependent resistors. And there are all sorts of resistive elements, right? And that's like a very common measurement device, very common sensor. Um, so people's sort of first instinct normally uh, when they play with these things is on the first page here. Everyone looks at that. That's what a lot of people do. They go, uh, I'm pull this. <coughs> Resistor. 
And so you've got white people kind of you know, coming in here. Uh, but maybe you read this one. You, well, you, read, you read this one, or you can have your light kind of resistor here. Or if you're really tricky, right? Here's something tricky. What if you have two light dependent resistors? <coughs> what can you use this for? So if they're exactly the same, then they'll be the same resistance, but then if there is one brighter source, like if you're a bright source here, a darker source here, you can see how the connection of that is different. Yeah, so if you had a really bright light here, you imagine that the resistance would be small, and when we all three derived the formula for the voltage resistor for people who may not know, or people who are not here, or people who have done it in a while, um, you can like figure out which side is brighter, and this is really handy if you have a robot and you want it to go towards the light, right? And, like a light seeking robot or a cockroach, and it's like the light turns on, it's like right, and like runs away. Um, so we'll give you some names. This will be V in. This one's V out. This one's ground. We'll assume it's zero volts. Uh, so the voltage in is equal to Call this one R1, this one R2, R1 plus R2 times the current through the whole thing, right? Which should be the same. We're assuming no current goes in here. The whole current only flows. Yeah, everyone can kind of see this. This bit has very, very, very high impedance. Um, Microcontroller is magic inside the box. We'll ignore that. Um, we also know that V out equals the current times R2, right? Sorry. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, so we have these two things. In both cases, I is the same, so we just solve for i and then substitute it back into the first problem because we, like, you know, we want it, we want whatever output is in terms of the unit. So we go ahead and we say that um, i equals v out over r2 and then we substitute that back into that. We'll sort of quickly finish this up here. Uh, we get v in equals R1 plus R2 uh, V out over R2 It's all in here you can't see, right? And then we just kind of solve for V out So we move all these sort of terms that are being divided and added and multiplied We just sort of get rid of them um, We can just sort of say this all over R2 Move from there Now we just say we have the n um, times R2 over R1 plus R2. So that's super handy. Useful formula to know if you're ever like messing with these things. Um, but you, okay, you don't know this. So that's how some of the resistors yet. But I'm not going to give you any um, pull-up resistors or extra resistors creatable to provide it. I didn't even guess why. I didn't even read ahead. Yeah, good. I can <coughs> stun you with all these microcontrollers. So the clever people who built microcontrollers um, realized that there is sort of a really cool thing they can do that would be really useful um, in reducing noise on these signals, especially digital ones. Um, because, you know, if you have something at zero volts, and you're reading any sort of fluctuation in very short times, um, it's easy to sort of get like a, a spike, right? Like you guys have seen on the oscilloscopes, you wave them around or poke things, and you do see kind of a voltage difference between like you and the air, right? Because of radiation from, you know, electronic things or static electricity, right? And you imagine it'd be really annoying if you like your microcontroller started doing weird things just because it was Friday and people were sort of walking by it and they were static. Um, so to this end, people cleverly 
installed a like inter an internal pull up resistor in microcontrollers. Really handy thing, really good, very useful. Um, so we have kind of like inside, <coughs> here's our pin, and then we'll have a thing here. So this is your input. This is a this is VN, right? It's a bulb resistor, so it goes to your power. And then you can put your button out here. And instead of connecting your button to power, which also means that the microcontroller would have to sync all the current that's going in, so which would be bad if the button has a low resistance, which it should. You can fry your chip if you have to fix something really big. Instead, what you do is you send power out, and so it's limited by how much the microcontroller can supply. Um, and it would turn on the <coughs> beat. So here's your here's your button, and here's ground. So now your right controller is now supplying power out, so it's not going to fry itself, hopefully. Um, and it can detect when it goes low, because this resistor is kind of big. So it's not like when you press the button, all of a sudden voltage over. Um, bulk resistor. So the other thing we can do is we can have, let's put our photoresistor here. Uh, all of a sudden you have a, a full resistor in there, that, so you have your voltage divider, and so you don't have to worry about all that nonsense. Uh, with like putting one in. Obviously, if you wanted to tune your system to so you have like a, a high rate of sensitivity, um, you would want to put in you know your own bulb resistor. Um, and if you want to be really sensitive, you should set up some buffers and like have an actual some sort of like, sensor package that you could then bring with the right controller um, instead, because I imagine you might get noise with this. But this is what we'll do today. One of the things we'll, we'll try to do today. The other thing we'll do is a fun trick with LEDs that turns them into photodiodes. So, who's played with LEDs? Okay, some people don't like LEDs, they don't play with them. Well. They're good, they're fun, they light up, they're fun. Sometimes you can blow them up, put too much current into them. Um, you can actually like, <coughs> watch the inside catch on fire if you're really careful. You can do it and look at it at the same time. You should wear safety goggles. All of them. <laughs> um, so there are these like, fun little things. You know, just like that, light comes out. And sort of the way they work is, let's see if I can remember how they work. I wrote it down here. Um, anyway, so you have two materials. Um, oh, what is it? We'll come back to this. I don't remember what I wrote down. Um, basically, there's a gap in like the like excitation levels of this material, and um, like electrons can only be like here, here, in the energy like levels, right? And so when they fall down, they release energy in the form of light. Um, and electrons are sort of supplied by the voltage, right? So it's pushing the electrons up. And they're sort of like falling down this gradient and going to ground. Uh, and that creates light. Now the interesting thing is that if you fill this up, electrons start to move through the diode and get a voltage potential basically across the diode. And it's, it correlates to how much light you put onto it. Which is kind of cool because I don't know, like photoresistors are something like seventy cents maybe if you get them from digital in large quantities, um, but like LEDs are like a couple cents. So if you're like, hey, I want a light, you know, light sensor that will tell me if the lights in the room are on or not, you can use an LED, which is very cool. You can also use them for like light finding robots. They're just kind of a cool, cheap thing to do, especially for prototypes. Um, and you don't even need a pull-up resistor because it's actually generating the voltage. Ah, uh, I wish I'd brought a oscilloscope, so I'd do it again. So I didn't. So maybe I'll make a video of it. Um, basically, you just have your pin on the right controller, and then you got like your LED. And you would want it to be this way. And this 
access to it. And this will increase the voltage dependent on what. So the symbol for that is either squiggly lines or straight lines into the photodiode. Now, they also sell these as like an actual thing, not just LEDs. Uh, but LEDs are cool because you get other interesting features like what color is the glass around the LED. If you have a green one, then certain frequencies will get passed through more easily. Um, they'll also respond better to green ones. There's sort of interesting things to think about as far as like choosing LEDs for sensors, which is something you can do, uh, or photodiodes. Also, you should definitely check out data sheets for these things. They will, do you guys want to see one? There are a couple of features that are kind of useful to check out. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Suppliers are Mouser. Um, there are some surplus suppliers. Um, that if you just look at the electronic surplus, it'll come across tons of results. Sometimes you can get good deals there, sometimes it's a rip. Sometimes you should go to Mouser or DigiKey. Um, let's look at photoresistor. Actually, we can look up the ones that we have today. They all have like DigiKey part numbers, so I'm going to look that up. Um, you also have sort of like the peak uh, sensitivity, um, they just sort of flood it in the light, um, that's useful if you want to pick up a certain color, like these might not do well with infrared, right? So see, these are nanometers, so this is good from 400 to 700, which is kind of uh, mostly in the, vision, like the visible range, 600 is green, 400 is reddish, so that covers pretty much everything. Um, but, you know, maybe not good for ultraviolet. 